Hello everybody and welcome to this video where we are going to be talking about some things like pen names. So let's talk about pen names. Now this question comes up a lot and the only answer I can give to you about pen names is to talk to you about uh, my experiences with working with pen names because th there were some positives and there were some negatives. And I think all of you um, writers out there, um, artists out there, uh, whatever public eye kind of career you're shooting for, it's really going to depend on you. Um, so take this with a grain of salt and see if any of this rings true to you. So basically, a real quick background of my situation is I was in a horror punk band. Um, and like dark wave and like ooh goth punk rock and all this other shit. And in that scene, it was really um, cute, I guess, to have some weird fucking name. So my name was Creep Creeperson. Okay. Creep Creeperson from Creepsville, Creepsachusetts. Okay, that was like my my spiel. And like um, other people who had been in the band at other points were like um, Mop, Stitchblade, um, El Mundo, uh, Rocky Horror Nandez, um, G Graves, Zom D, Graveyard. And there, there were a couple others that I'm forgetting. The point of the matter is, is that that was like a kitschy kind of thing. And then because of how my career was moving through that with the filmmaking and making music videos, going from the band to make music videos was a logical progression. And then when our distributor wanted me to start making films and still promote the music side, making films under the name Creep Creeperson still made sense. I was pigeonholing myself, but that still made sense, okay? Then um, I started actually doing well making films, and I was making good money, and I was getting lots of work, and it was kind of a double-sided blade because the name was so weird and out there that um, getting meetings felt really easy. Like getting meetings to pitch ideas in front of people and stuff like that. Because it was such a weird fucking thing. But once you got to this point, going higher than that with a name that was so kind of cheesy seemed almost impossible it kind of like fucked my shit up. So I got kind of disillusioned with Hollywood and the whole fucking thing. But I still had a really large fan base based off of the Creep Creeperson name. So when I first started writing books, um, I was writing them under Creep Creeperson. And what I found really quick was that... Um, a lot of the community, the horror fan who liked the fun music and who liked the schlocky movies, didn't necessarily read. And bringing them over was not working. And being on Amazon, hawking my books, like, I would get, like, reviews on a lot of my books saying... And I doubt that's even his real name. And it's like, wow, look at this fucking brilliant motherfucker spouting fucking philosophy over here. So it ended up being kind of a detriment. So I went through this phase where I didn't, like, I was really enjoying writing the books, but I didn't know, like, what to do. So I wanted to kind of bridge the gap, I guess, between... 
Creep Creeperson and Matt Wall. So I went, I don't know why I thought this was a good idea, but at the time I did. I went by C, C, Wall, like C dot C dot Wall, because it was like Creep Creeperson Wall. Well, then, and again, this is like what, like 2014? A lot of people were getting confused because they thought I was um, a female because my name was Cece. And I'm like, no, you jackass, it's two initials, C dot space, C dot space. And um, there was just confusion. And I don't know why it, like, was such a big deal, but it kept coming up when I was, like, doing, like, interviews and shit. Black Star Canyon was going really well at this time, because I think I changed it halfway through the series, like, right in the middle of the third season um, of the serial which is a stupid fucking thing to do. Do not rebrand during a launch. For fuck's sake, don't do that. So then that all like went to shit, and um, I was still doing CC Wall for certain things. But then, um, because of the way Amazon's algorithms worked at the time, and I'm sure they probably still work the same way, um, Amazon is a robot. Okay, and the robot wants to sell people things. So when you write a horror novel, let's say, Amazon wants to see if other people who buy horror novels will like your book. If they too buy those things, then Amazon's like, oh, this is a very logical next step. And this is where the also bots come in, okay? And I know I'm kind of getting into the weeds here, but this is really fucking important. So your also bots, like when you're on an Amazon page and you're scrolling down and then you see the thing where it's like, oh, people who bought this also bought these things. That's really, really important because if Amazon thinks they could have a niche to sell your product to, Amazon will continually sell that product to those people. So if you write in separate genres, like exclusively, like all the time, every book's going to be different, you're going to confuse the robot. And when you confuse the robot, the robot is more likely to just drop you all together than try to figure out a way to make it work. All right? So that's why... Um, a lot of people who sell, like they write a book and they put their book up on Amazon and it's their first book and they're all excited. And then the book sells like two days and then doesn't sell anymore. The reason this is, okay, I'm gonna blow your fucking mind right here. This is marketing 101 here for fucking Amazon. The reason why your book doesn't sell is because you had your mom your dad, your grandma, your uncle, your sister, your brother, your neighbor, your partner, your partner's dad, your partner's mom. You had all these people go buy your book the day it came out because they all wanted to support you. Okay. And that's a very good and admirable thing. But what this tells Amazon, Amazon looks at other books those people have bought. And if like one person likes to buy cookbooks and the next person likes to buy hardcore erotica. And the third person likes to buy, I don't know, fucking flip-flops. Not even books. This is the first book they ever bought. And the next person um, only buys um, digital copies of magazines. Okay? And the third person is really into um, YA books. And the next person um, only buys sports-based nonfiction. This is going to tell the also bot that this book has no niche and it cannot be sold to anyone. So it's better if we just pretend this book doesn't exist. So when you have also bots that have tons of different um, genres in there, the Amazon algorithm will not push your book. It, they will not help you sell that book. 
So at that point, it's like screaming in the void. And if you are a first time author or anything like that, like scroll down, go to your um, product page, scroll down and look at your also bots. If those also bots aren't all the exact same genre, you're fucked. And the only way to fix that would be to um, basically pay and hopefully get accepted for like a book bub ad to have them do a email blast in that genre that you're wanting to sell your book in. And if enough people come and get it, especially if you do like a free week or something, if enough people come and get it, th that should trick the also bots um, into like niching you out so then you can sell that. So that was like a side um, lesson there for you, but that is like crucial. That is so fucking important if you're planning on uh, making a living as a self-published author. Okay, and the reason why I bring that up is because I write in different genres all the fucking time. I love it, I love it, I love it. I hate being tied down to one fucking thing. So in 2016, I decided to do something so horribly tragic and so fucking um, just detrimental to my career. I decided that I was going to have a different pen name for every subgenre that I write in. And so with that comes having to have an email list for each um, thing and having um, social media accounts for each pen name, author, and all this other shit. And then I was like, God, the only way I can make this work, I guess, would to like start my own publishing house and just um, have all of these pen names under one roof. And then that way I could start a publishing company. And as it grows, I could start like bringing in books that I want to publish from other writers and all this stuff. So the idea originally, without the like production or the publishing house, was perfect. A bunch of separate fucking books by separate fucking authors. So let me go down the list of pen names. I had um, Vic Lord... Uh, James Ian Carter, Kurt Joukowsky, Alan Edwards, Zoe Shea. And you're like, oh, so you're just doing like first names of a lot of people you like? Yeah, I, I needed help and I needed to do this fast. There was another one, um, something Stickley. Leon Stickley, I think, was another one. I, so I had all these fucking stupid pen names and everything was fine. Everything was good. Well then, so I started this publishing company called Gold Metal Faucet. And if you were around my early booktube days, you will go, oh, I vaguely remember Gold Metal Faucet. And the reason why it was called Gold Metal Faucet was a play on faucet gold metal books. But like, I changed the name of faucet, or changed the spelling of faucet, changed the name of metal to metal. Um, that whole fucking thing. I thought it was clever. I thought it was cute. So then I had a website for Gold Metal Faucet. I had a mailing list for Gold Metal Faucet. And guess what I started fucking doing? I started sending out newsletters to all of my peeps in the Gold Metal Faucet family empire. And you know what this did? Fucked up my also bots. Because now, again, we had people buying books in all different genres on my also bots and Amazon told me to go suck a bag of dicks. Okay. So, um, the moral of this story is if you want to have a pen name because you need, you want like a barrier of privacy between your art and the world that's fine. The problem with that is, is in today's climate and culture and all this other shit, in order to market your stuff properly, you need to have a presence. And so, and you don't need to put your face out there. Like I know a lot of writers who do YouTube videos and they never show their face and you hear their voice, but you never see their face and that's fine. Um, 
But when you do that, I kind of think you lose a bit of connection. I think some people could pull it off if they are very compelling in their voice. But um, some people aren't that compelling. And so when you take um, the visual away, and I'm not saying like you have to be good looking or anything like that. I mean, look at fucking homeless bear man over here. Um, you just have to be compelling. You have to be able to do all this stuff. So if your idea in having a pen name is to isolate yourself from having to do anything like that, then you've probably already failed. Um, unless you are one of the lucky ones who writes an amazing first novel and sends it to an agent or a publishing house, and then five years later the book comes out to astounding success. That does happen. It's rare, but it does happen. So if that's the way you want to go, then that's fine. But um, if you're going to do a pen name and try to market yourself and try to do all this stuff, it is going to be very hard if the whole goal in having that pen name is to put a barrier between you and the outside world. If you're doing the pen name because you think the name is catchy and your real name is like... Um, I don't know, Cherkov, Schnernanovich, that, that's a hard name to say. I, I couldn't even finish it. So if you want to change your name to like Stan Smith, okay, like that's probably a better name for the front of a book. If Because like a lot of people go, well, you know, Stephen King like had some books that he, I don't if he didn't know if he was, so he was like Richard Bachman and that was okay and then he changed it. Yeah, it's a different world now. Like, people used to be able to write whatever, put it in the mail, and it would be published somewhere under whatever fucking name you put on there. You could put, like, JT Stupid Dog. And they're like, oh, did you see this thing from JT Stupid Dog? This is some brilliant shit. You know? And it's not really like that now. Because a lot of... Even a lot of publishers expect you to have an online presence. They will base your book deal on your marketing ability online. Because the least amount of work they have to do, the better. So a really good example of this is fucking Insta Poetry. Like, on merit, a lot of those books that came out never, ever would have seen the light of day. But the reason why they did is because motherfuckers have like a million followers on Instagram. And the publisher's like, oh, they have a million followers on Instagram. That's that's some great marketing right there. And that's it. So um, I feel like this turned into a fucking marketing conversation. I don't know. Um, long story short, think about what you want to do. Um, for those of you who are in the Poetic Anarchy course. The lesson for today on the Muse, that will be up a little bit later. Um, so sorry for that delay. Um, I just wanted to get this out while it was fresh in mind because this question keeps coming up. So I guess at the end of the day, if you want to do a pen name, think about it carefully and know if that's a name that you want to stick with for a very long time. Because um, whenever you change your name, um, you're going to drop some people. And then people are even like, you're like, well, I have a mailing list and I could just let them know in the mailing list. Your mailing list is not going to read every email you send out. Like, if you're lucky, you have a 30% engagement to where people actually open the fucking email and read it. So one day, they're getting emails from... Um, Nancy Snyder and then the next week they get an email from like um, Becky Thomas and they're like who the fuck is Becky Thomas I didn't subscribe to Becky Thomas's fucking newsletter unsubscribe reason why I didn't sign up for this if you have any questions about this let me know down below like this is like I could talk about this shit for hours, obviously. So I will talk to you guys later. Bye-bye.
I just want to give a quick thanks to those people who make these videos possible. Anarchy Creo and my followers on Patreon, I appreciate the hell out of you guys, and thank you so much for keeping me going to keep this content possible. You guys are awesome. And if you'd like to join the Creo or the Anarchy Creo, just hit the join button beneath this video. And if you'd like to become a member of my Patreon, you can run over to the link down below to do that as well. Thank you.